Hi everyone, uh, mass airflow sensor here from a Kia Sportage 5 wire. Um, it's broke, I've replaced it. Let's have a look inside, see if we can figure out how to fix it, if we can fix it. Hey again everyone, so I've got a limited understanding of a mass airflow sensor, uh, how this particular version works. I understand how a normal mass sensor works, basically you've got air going in, on this one it goes through this way, there is actually an airflow arrow on there. So the, this comes from the air intake, uh, air cleaner. It goes through, it goes over a hot wire, um, and the resistance is measured, or a change is me measured, and that tells the engine ECU, the engine management unit, or computer or whatever you want to call it uh, it tells it tells it that you've got airflow um, so it works as it hot wire let's so um, yeah I mean that, that's all I know um, how it looked why has it got all this I'm not sure maybe to do with airflow to keep some bugs out or something because there's a, there's a fine mesh inside there this has got five wires as it, it's a five terminal one um, so it's going to have a main in, uh, 12 volt feed most probably um, and sensors of some sort so let's let's take a bit and have a look okay so I've got a nice assortment of tools of, of uh, probably inappropriate uh, strength and I'm going to keep recording while I go through this and uh, if it turns out highly uninteresting, all I'll do is we'll just fast forward it, so... Okay, so that's the top bit out. It wasn't... it was glued in. So, yeah, yeah, I, yeah you can see the remnants of the glue inside there. Um, yeah, so there wasn't any other way of getting that out. However, that's, that's still usable. This appears to be just some sort of, as I say, uh, as I guess rather, um, some sort of filter of some sort. I wasn't sure whether it was um, used like you can use um, straws with water to redirect the water or to make the water sm run smoother. Will that do that? Don't know if it's long enough. I very much doubt it to be honest. Uh, the other end of this unit appears to be glued in as well, so I'm not even going to attempt that. But what I can see so far is I've got a diode in here. This unit go ah that's actually started making movements, which makes you wonder, doesn't it? Is this just overpriced? Is this just a standard mass sensor that's in a housing? That had a note of finality about it. Good lord. So, that's reusable. Okay. Right, I'm going to pause while I clean some of this crap away. Okay, folks. So, yeah, that looks like it could be a um, diode. Interestingly, we appear to have some heat burn here on this side, so I'm gonna. You know what? That looks as though it's all melted and chowdered up there. So, does that pop out? Yes, it does. Is it supposed to? <laughs> That's the magic coin. Oh, there we go. So, there's our circuitry. Um, and inside there, we can see our connection. Unfortunately, I bust the light up the. So we can see our four connections coming in here. Um, uh, oh, so it's got a silicon type covering on these. That's good news. That doesn't explain why. That looks like it's been 3D printed. Oh, mach oh it's machine tooling, Mark. Sorry. I don't know whether I'll be able to capture that because was, you can just make out the swirling, which made me think it was 3D printed, but it's actually machining. So it's been machined. So it's gone through a process of being injection molded, most probably, and then machined. Because I can't see the machining a whole piece of plastic, but it's definitely had some tooling work going on there. So moving swiftly, I'm starting to gibber already. Right, so I 
guess that was heating, heating marks along there, so it can't be. But what we do have in here is so we've got an, an eight, two eight-pin chips in here, which I might try and clean off and see if we can see what they are. Because if we can see what these are, then even a simpleton like me will be able to make some approximate guesses as to what's going on in here. But what we've got here is the air is obviously going to go in, swirl around and come out here by the looks of it. I'm not going to stick my lips on there and blow through because otherwise I'm just going to cut, cut. Yeah, it's not going to be right. But again, this chamber looks as though it comes off. So I'm going to say that inside there somewhere, we've got the hot wire and this is just going to do a differential and figure out what type of signal to send so let's see if we can get into this oh that was surprisingly easy there it is okay so that's no more than super glued in and there there it is so there's our hot wire doodah and a resistor which is red, it says. No, it's not, it's brown. Brown is what? One. So that's a one ohm resistor. So in reality, yeah. Yeah, a one ohm resistor, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure what the point that was. Let's see if we can get some more of this out. So it's just, it's all held in, it's just all silicon here. Right, so I'm probably going to pause the video while I give this a good clean up and see if I can get this circuit board out. And I might see if I can try and do a bigclive.com and reverse engineer it. Uh, which will probably actually turn out to be a load of garbage and I'll have most of it wrong. But at least we might have a list of the components attached to this thing. Which means if you own a Kia Sportage and you have an error with this unit, if I can get you all the components, between us we might be able to figure out a circuit diagram and you know what you might be able to find something that does the same or replace it with an arduino of some sort which to be honest is my initial war cry replace it with an arduino because i'm just one of those strange people who loves arduinos and hey if i can do it cheaper then because this as i say the replacement bosch replacement has cost me 170 pounds including all the vat at the start of value added tax and postage um, dollars, $200, something like that, uh, and various other amounts of money in various other currencies. But yeah, and it, whereas if I can build it cheaper, I'm all for that. So see you all shortly. Well, as much as I'd like to say this is going well, I can't. So it's got um, silicon everywhere, and I'm pretty sure it's got silicon behind it. Uh, which is holding it in so I'm just gonna pop this off and um, just oh wait wait what have I got going on here so we there she is so it's, it was glued in but not by much let's get the meter out let's start making beeping noises So I'm thinking that that piece of copper there is connected to the second pin. It's not. Unless <laughs> that'll be my Okay, so what have we got going on here? What is this? Is that supposed to be open circuit or is it supposed to be closed circuit? Whatever it is. I have no idea what that component is. But I know what I need to do is find an original one so I can figure out what that component is. So I might break out the old magnifying doofus. It's not as if it's going back together, is it? Right. 
so it does look like the so it has been um, an insult. I think I've got a, one of those crappy microscopes over there. I'm going to see if I can take a photo with that. Okay, folks, here we go. As you can see, if I can keep that in screen, which I'm just about to not look. That's the end of that then. So I'll try and turn it around now. And there's. Yes, that's definitely not right, is it? I think you can agree that that is not right. So. Well, there you go. That was done using this awesome piece of equipment. Uh, yeah. Garbage. Well, I'll tell you what, I did the job. Let's, ooh, uh, yep. Yeah, let's just, yeah, that can go over there out of the way. So that doodah is what has just cost me 180 quid. Well, I'm going to say it's that, but anyway, yeah. Um, interesting. Just don't know what doodah it is. And now that I've put away the microscope, I can't see what's on these. Doesn't appear to be anything. So I'm going to give. I'm going to pause the video. Uh, give these components a clean up. I can faintly see some rashes. So I'm going to, going to give them a clean up. I've got some uh, isopropyl alcohol. Isopropanol alcohol. Well, there we go. Now that tells a story, folks. 12F1840. That is a PIC microprocessor which I've just opened a data sheet for. So it's an 8 pin flash microcontroller with nanowatt XLP technology. And we'll have a look and see if I can get us on to the other one, which is A2904. So I'm going to quickly pause while I Google 2904. Okay, so 2904 is an op amp somewhere and I've just it's a low power dual op amp we're getting places here guys and girls right so I'm gonna spin it around we've got another funky doodad there with an AMS and there's some cheese on there so I'll give that a scrub see if we can get rid of that yuck and that is an AM still can't read it AMS 117 alright let's quick pause and pause while I google the shit out of that one okay so the yeah I can't load it but oh there it comes AMS 117 is a 3.3 volt power supply so that's the power supply uh, what else we've got going on down here can't really make that one needs to clean off if I can read it, I'll Google it. D eight eight two. So here we go. Google again. Okay, so reading. I've just found it on datasheet three sixty dot com. And D eight two two is a transistor. It's a bipolar transistor. Is that a BJT bipolar junction gate or something? Like that? But it's discontinued now anyway. Um, but that's for the package. TO126. I'm not sure what that package is, so I'll quickly Google that package. That's not the package, that's closer. That looks the TO126 looks like a TO220. But this obviously is definitely not that. Right, okay, moving on. We we'll come back to our dual op amps. No, oh, that's our pick. Dual op amp, and yeah, we've got the U so we'll just basic um, capacitors, resistors, doodad, we have a doodad. Okay, so if you know what that is, then please feel free to make a note below. There's another one here. They're both NMs. Not sure what that is, but I'll probably have it. Oh, I'm going to Google it. So the internet always tells you the truth, so it could be pretty much one of a number of things. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a transistor, because each leg there appears to have, trying to find a pointy stick. 
Um, let's see if I can. That. We've got one, two, three. Yeah, so all three connected. So it's definitely a transistor. Yeah, because somebody was saying that there could be a Zener diode, which would only have two connected items. But no, that's three. So we're definitely a transistor of some sort, uh, which in that case, it's probably an NPN transistor. Um, Definitely going to have to, because that goes through there, down there. And inside, I'm just sort of going through this roughly in my head. So through there, and that goes into... 12F pin 1 is normally VCC, I do believe, on the 12F pick. That's just some that I, one of those vague remembering things. So I might have a see if I can plug this in and read the pick. You never know. But yeah, so there we go. And as for the other end, so we have our. That's our brown. That is brown. I'm sure that's brown. And where's Mr. Heaty thing? So that, I believe is going to be a thermistor of sorts so it measures uh, the resistance changes as the heat changes and so the pick probably reads that and sends an output so I'm like, yeah i'm actually going to see if i can scribble this down unfortunately there's lots of through holes and wires on it. just change scenes yeah there's lots of through holes and wires going on on the back um Thing is, that's the no, that's the pig. So it's just interesting. This is just mind-bogglingly interesting to me. Uh, I will actually take this to the next level. I think I'm going to actually figure out what goes where. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to decrypt it if it's encrypted or whatever. But I might have a little read. Uh, you never know what you can do with this kind of thing, yeah. So anyway, that's it for now. Um, if I do actually have a more messing around and find any more anything else out useful, um, I'll probably start doing you a video on it. Um, I've really enjoyed doing this because it's something totally different that I don't normally do. And um, hopefully I've saved you having to rip on a bit or so wonder how it works. Um, so thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please feel free to subscribe. Uh, if you like the video, again, hit the old uh, like button and um, hit, the, hit the little bell next to it then you get notifications when there's going to be updates if you didn't like the video hit the hit the down uh, thumbs down but let me know okay thanks for thanks again take care ciao